think about optimal consumption, it's time to try to look at what would happen if different things were to change, such as your income level or the price of one of the goods. Otherwise, so far, all we've looked is the scenario of a typical consumer and trying to find out what's the optimal consumption bundle that they're going to choose. But it's interesting also to see what would happen if the price of one of the goods would change or what would happen if the income level would change. So <clears throat> when we represent the budget constraint, if I come back to the concept of the budget constraint, when we represent the budget constraint, we need three things. What we need is our income level. We need the price of the first good, here it's cola. And we need the price of the second good, here it's pizza. With these three things, it's easy to construct the budget constraint, which tells us the maximum amount of cola or pizza we can consume and all the other uh, consumption bundles that are still feasible with respect to the budget constraint. So, so far we've had an income of $10. We've had the price of cola being $1 and the price of pizza being $2 meaning that if we only consume cola, we could consume 10 units. If we only consume pizza, we could only consume five units. And there is a bunch of combination in between the two, which are feasible with respect to our original budget constraint. Now it's time to see what would happen if the budget constraint would change. What would happen if our income level would change to let's say $20? The price of cola and the price of pizza haven't changed, so I haven't changed them here. But if I look at the quantity of cola I could consume, well, $20, it's a dollar each. So I could now consume 20 units. I'm just gonna extend this line here, 20 units. And if I look at pizza, I could now consume 10 units. If I were to link up these two lines, this is what I would get. This is our new budget constraint. A very important thing to notice here that might be a little harder uh, on my diagram here, but if you were to draw it to scale, is that these two lines are parallel. These little arrows like this are used mathematically to represent two lines that are parallel. These two lines are parallel, so if I were to just have a small increase in income, it would just be a small parallel shift out, a larger, like doubling the level of income, a larger um, parallel shift out. So this should be completely parallel. Okay. So this is what happens when the budget line uh, increases, when our income level or the gift certificate or, or whatever we have allows us to purchase more since we have more income. So what would happen here in terms of consumption if I had my initial, let's say my initial budget constraint, my initial indifference curve that went with it, that was my optimal indifference curve, led to this point here. Well, I could have a multitude of things that happens in the new scenario. I could either have that I can consume more of both goods, that my optimal consumption is more of both goods, but I could also have the situation where I can consume, where I consume more of one, but less of the other ones. So there's two different possibilities here that will happen. So two possibilities, either increase in consumption of both goods or I could have a situation where I have increase in consumption of one good and decrease in consumption of the other good. Okay. Those are the two possible scenarios that you might observe. The increase in consumption of both goods would tell me that both are normal. And if I have the situation where I have increasing consumption of one good and decreasing the other is one is normal and one is inferior. Okay. These are the different things you can notice following this income level change. So I could either have my new equilibrium point 
if it's anywhere along this budget constraint that is anywhere between these two limits that I just set, I'm increasing cola consumption and I'm increasing pizza consumption. So any of these points would tell me that both goods are normal. However, if I end up somewhere over here, I am in fact consuming less pizza, therefore pizza would be inferior and cola would be normal. And if I were to consume somewhere over here, well, I consume much more pizza, but less cola than before, pizza is normal and cola is inferior. Next up, we will look at what happens when there is an increase in the price of one good and not the other one. So we could go back to our initial scenario here where we had, again, we need three pieces of information. I have my income is equal to uh, 10. So I'll go back to the original scenario. My price of cola is equal to one. My price of pizza is equal to $2. Therefore, in terms of cola, I could consume 10 units in terms of pizza. I could consume five units if I only consume that or any combination. Oop. Let me just undo these two. Any combination between these two points. So this is my budget constraint, marginal budget constraint again in purple. And now if I move on to green, assuming that the price of cola increases from one to $2. So everything else has stayed the same except the price of cola. Therefore, as soon as you see this, um, you have to keep in mind that if your income level is the same and you only consume pizza, this should not impact how much pizza you can consume. Okay, it's only the price of cola that's changed. So knowing that this and this haven't changed, we could assume here that the, we could still consume five units of pizza and this is still true. So this point does not change. So when we're dealing the, with a change in price of one of the two goods, one of the two corner points will stay the same. And now if I look at what's my maximum amount of coal I could consume with the same level of income with the newer price, well, I could only consume now five units. So this here has changed, this corner point has changed. And now I could draw a straight line between these two points. Okay, so this corner point's still good. This one is new and everything else kind of has to get adjusted in. So this in green will be my new budget constraint. Yeah. So this is what happens when we increase the price of a good. And then afterwards, if we were to draw out indifference curves, we could start seeing two different things. It gets a little bit more complicated here, but two possibilities is that we'll have kind of like, are we dealing with substitutes or complements? And we could also talk about uh, income effects. Since the price of one good is more expensive now, you might have uh, some sort of income effect as well. But these things here are quite more complicated. So these are kind of things that you will see probably in intermediate micro or echo 208 here at bishops so this is our situation so keep in mind that as the price of one good goes up it limits your consumption of that good but it also limits the consumption of the different bundles as soon as you consume some of that good if you're only consuming the other good that hasn't changed in price then it doesn't really limit it so much The last one I want to cover here is a situation where I have um, <clears throat> I have a change in the price of both goods. Because so far we've looked at income changing, we've looked at the price of one good changing. Uh, if we look at the price of the other good changing, but not this one, it's going to lead to the same kind of impact. So now I want to go from this original scenario that we had $10 budget, $1 and $2. And now try to think what would happen if the price of both of these goods would increase? What happens if let's for this case here, let's double 
both of these prices. So not just one, but both. And here we're looking at the economy, the whole world as in a too good framework. We know we could generalize this uh, in terms of um, consumption goods and and one other specific good in reality there you could always aggregate a bunch of goods to create one and then compare it to another so it's possible and as soon as you have a situation that all the goods that you have access to are doubling in price this would be linked to something that we would call more in macroeconomics potentially this idea of inflation that we have a situation that the cost of all goods in the economy are essentially going up this is a situation when we have inflation on all the goods happening at the same time. Yeah. So we go from our original scenario of cola and pizza. We were able to consume 10 and 5. And now we want to see what would happen. Well, because the two prices have changed, these two corner points are no longer good. We're going to have to change them both. And when we change them both, well, how much cola could I consume? Well, I have $10, un dollars, $2 a pop. If I only can consume cola, I would consume five units. But that's if I consume zero pizza. And if I only consume pizza, um, I have $10. Price of pizza is $4. I could consume two and a half slices of pizza. So I would have this situation here. Once again, if you were to draw these nicely, you would see that these two lines are essentially parallel. Okay, these two lines are parallel, which means that um, that's parallel, which means that an increase in price of all goods is the same as a drop in income. Okay. So if ever you end up in a macroeconomics class and we start talking about inflation and the increase in the price of all goods in the economy, or you start noticing this in the newspapers, and you're not really worried about it. And in some countries, you could have inflation rates of, let's say, 10% per year. You think it's not that big of a deal. Well, an inflation rate of 10% a year is essentially the same thing as if all the price stayed the same and we're just cutting down your income level year after year because your purchasing power with that income level or with that gift certificate gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Some countries are more extreme than others on this front. Um, but overall, a decrease in income is the same as an increase in the price of all goods. So here, if I were to try to think, well, what would represent the same scenario as this? Well, by just changing the income level before, well, this would be the same as if I had an income level of $5. This would be my income and I still had the $1 price of cola and $2 price of pizza. If you're not convinced, try it out. If I have $5 and cola is $1, I could consume five units, same as here. And if I have $5 and I only consume pizza, I could consume two and a half slices of pizza. So I would have the exact same budget constraint, whether I have the situation where my prices have doubled or my income level has fallen by half. So these were the main three changes in the budget constraint. And each of these kind of lead to a similar or different story. This one with the price of both goods changing, just see it as the same explanation as I had with a change in income. In this case here, the change in income would be a reduction in income compared to the increase we had uh, for the first example. So keep that in mind and try to think about different scenarios that we might have in life and how the budget constraint would change and um, that's a big step.